Hello, my friends. I'm Adam Fawcett, and I'm going to bring you the Pickleball 12. This is a follow-along training in good body mechanics and functional movement that's going to provide you a good solid warm-up for all of your joints and muscles to help you reduce your chances of injury on the court and to make you your very best when you're playing pickleball or doing any other functional activity. We start out with our feet nice and square. This is a simple and potent Qigong exercise called the Master's Exercise. Begin with your feet nice and square, shoulder width. Reach up over your head, stretch nice and tall. And when it starts, you're just gonna let your arms swing down and push your butt back very slightly. So you're coming down into a mini squat. Notice that those knees stay right over the toes. You don't wanna be buckling those in. That, that's incorrect right there. Keep the knees over. Your weight's coming down through the center of your foot, a little bit through the outsteps and heels largely midfoot with a little emphasis on the heels and out steps to give you a nice square stance. Look what we're doing here. That's halfway through the 52 second exercise. Watch those arms. We're warming up the shoulders. We're getting the breath cooking. Arms are going all the way around. Pretty straight arms. Getting a nice warm up in that shoulder, a little compression in the bones and joints. We need some compression, getting those joints ready to move, getting ready for the more involved in larger exercises that are coming. Wind that down, and the next one is called a star squat. You lace your fingers, you pull your head into your resisting hands, elbows out nice and wide, feet slightly wider, and you're gonna push into a squat. Now a good squat keeps the heels down, drives the weight back. Remember, a good squat starts with a hinge, which is like that, and then you're coming down. You do not have to go all the way deep at the beginning, Hopefully by number five or number 10, you will be all the way down in the hole. Notice how those knees stay right over the toes, okay? Once again, we don't wanna be buckling knees. Wanna keep those out there. Keep a little pressure on the hands, a little pressure head into the hands, turning on those upper back muscles, cranking those out. And if you're getting good at these, you can push these last couple by hanging out down here, keeping that spine long, driving to the heels. Most excellent. Next thing we're gonna do is called a hitchhiker. Now you will do these both at the same time, but begin by holding your elbow in front of you and bringing that hand in and across and out. We're getting a full rotation in that shoulder rotator. Really gotta take care of the shoulders. There are three or four different moves in this sequence that take care of the shoulders. Now I have you train that with that in front, with your elbow held in front to prevent you from doing this. If you're doing this, you're still warming up your shoulders. It's just that this is more effective. Bring those right in as if you're giving the cut sign. Take those out. See how far you can get that forearm outside of vertical. That's where you're really using the rotator cuff and muscles to warm each other up. Towards the end, you can put a little pressure on it, squeeze the fists, push those out, and that's hitchhikers. Next, we're gonna go after the upper back. There's three different moves we'll do in this minute. This is called a high row. It's as if I'm dragging my arms, my forearms across the roof of my car. I'm pulling my shoulder blades together and squeezing all of these muscles across the top. This is to stabilize your scat, to warm up your large upper back muscles, scapular stabilizers. That's a high row at about 30 seconds or so. You can take it to a W. This is called a W. See, that's a high W. It's a goal post. I'm putting another good rotation on those rotator cuffs always squeezing your shoulder blades together. Shoulder blades go forward, they come back, head stays back, that's your high W. And you can also do stick ups, in which you do this move right here, keeping your upper back flexed, turn on, reaching them up, taking them out wide. Super powerful stuff, taking care of your upper back. Let's warm up the neck, simple moves here. Taking it forward and back, just fast enough that you're not gonna, not so fast that you're gonna make yourself dizzy or hurt anything, but it's really good to warm up the neck. About six times forward and back, stop with a nice tall chin, look all the way to this side, all the way to that side. About six of those. Simple move, really good to do. We do not move our neck enough to full range of motion. And I didn't count those, but if you're gonna count, you go about six each way, and then you hold that neck nice and tall, and you bring your ear to your shoulder and your ear to your shoulder, and hopefully you'll get time for six, six, each of those. And then we're gonna do lunges. Lunges are fairly complex. 
<clears throat> I can train these for you separately, but basically you want your feet about shoulder width, back far enough that this shin is gonna stay vertical over the ankle, and this femur is gonna come down pretty straight. Don't come forward on your lunges. It's actually called a split squat. Dipping them down like that. The waist through the front heel. This knee stays outside of the toe. Once again, I don't wanna buckle that in. You're dropping straight down and you switch legs at the halfway point. Resquare those hips, get them nice and squared forward. This back foot is either straight forward or slightly internally aimed. Don't wanna have it way out there like that. Dropping your lunge down. I've got other training videos on lunges, but this is a really powerful move to do before you play pickleball or engage in any kind of fast moving agility sport. Get your hips warmed up and your knees, march those out briefly, and we're gonna warm up the wrists. Wrists are particularly important, somewhat injury prone, prone in pickle bar. Really roll these, start them nice and easy. You're gonna get six to 10 forward, which is the dominant paradigm. And then you're gonna roll them six to 10 times backwards. Put a little roll on them. You can, after you've been doing this for a while, really try to put that range of motion. Get them in every bend as much as you can. And then at about the halfway point, we put them out in what's called iron hands, another qigong exercise. You can peel those hands, put those palms way back. You can be in the frontal plane, technically you should be slightly in front of the frontal plane. Really reach for the horizons. Stretch all the tendons in your shoulders, elbows, wrists, and then shake them out. All right, we need a little bit of balance work. You're gonna do leg swing, pouring all your weight into your left leg, put the right leg back and the right hand out like you're shaking hands and get a little shuffle going like that. That's your warm up. If you've got that dialed, you let this swing. A lot of great things happens here. We're loosening up the spine, making some space in that hip, and we're practicing dynamic balance, which is something that we need to work on every day. There's your halfway point, switch legs, set it up. If you need to do this for your first five or six times you do it, do it, that's not a problem. Once you get it dialed, you'll be able to Keep that swing it helps to keep your eyes fixed on a point, maybe 10 yards in front of you on the ground. If you sway a little bit while you're doing this or you almost wipe out, that's actually good for you. Training your vestibular recovery system, leg swings. All right, now we do some more balance. This is called a, a, a crunch, standing same side crunch. Reach for the sky, open your abdominals here, bring that knee up to the elbow. As it comes up, you're gonna exhale and pull that navel in squeezing your entire abdominal cage, your whole girdle here, ha! Get a little breath on that, ha! Squeezing them in, and stretch it good. Take the other side, bring them up, bring it up. You're gonna get the best result out of this if you're consciously exhaling and pulling that navel towards your spine as you come up. And if you really wanna work your balance and your abs, when it gets towards the end of that minute or the end of the first half minute, you're gonna drive that elbow into the knee and feel that come from the abs. Really squeeze that in like that. Excellent abs work. Super good. Calf raises. A Little bit of balance also. Drive up hard. Get all the way as tall as you can. Hinge back a little bit when you're down. Rock your feet up. Drive those calves up. Get a good squeeze in the ball of your calves. Get those ankles pointed as you can. If you've been doing this for a while, at the halfway point, you can count six of them on one side, four or six on one side, really get it up there high. Foot behind you is a little easier for balance and then switch legs, get it up like that. Throw that foot up like that. That's optional. If you just do the regular calf raises for the whole minute or 52 seconds, that's fine. Get a good squeeze on them and it's good to stretch those out a little bit before you play. Really good, we're almost done. We're gonna do ballistic arm swings, which are great to do after we've warmed up the shoulders, which we've done three times at least already. Notice what happens with the hands. Palms are down when they're forward, palms are forward when they're back. We're rotating those shoulders again, and then we're gonna kick in an anterior shoulder stretch by grabbing these back behind here. I call this the heart blossom stretch. I pull that chest out. Notice what my thumbs are doing. I've turned my palms towards my sacrum, my butt as I do that. And I push those shoulders right back and I stretch right across the top of the chest and that front deltoid. 
which is vulnerable in throwing sports and some racket sports. Push those back, move your shoulders around a little bit, keep the head back, don't look down on this. Look forward, horizontal, very nice. One more thing we're gonna do, it's called a sumo squat stretch. <clears throat> Drive those feet out pretty far, put the knees right out over the toes, lock your elbows, push out to stretch your adductors, what your high school coach used to call your groins. Stretch those out, sit into the heels. My arms are straight and compressed, my spine is stretched. And after a little bit of those, you can hold that for the whole minute if you like. I call this a giraffe and turtle. Really great for lengthening that spine, getting those hips open up. Also really wonderful for the second half to do some lateral squats, which are a little more advanced, but you wanna keep this foot down, come down with your butt back, weight into that heel, hinge forward, straight forward, stretch those out five or six times. Excellent for your lateral motion. You are ready for your game.